Okay, so uh, this is another video pretty quick after the one I just made. Um, I just remember there's one thing I wanted to point out. Uh, I ran across this on the Mini Brute forums, and this was actually pointed out by one of the engineers. Um, basically, you may have noticed some weirdness with uh, the LFO, with the sawtooth wave. And I'll demonstrate. Okay, so there we just have a tone, right? Now, okay, so you can hear the filter opening gradually and then thunk, gradually thunk, gradually thunk, which is what you'd expect from a sawtooth wave. Now you hear there, it goes up sharp, and then tapers down, which means that, so, what's actually going on, I noticed this, and, um, so I was wondering, you know, what was going on with the machine, why it was doing that, but it, it turns out that the silk screen here, for the sawtooth wave is actually backwards. Um, what happened was they had to make a last minute change to the electronics inside the machine that made it so that the sawtooth isn't that shape. It's actually flipped end for end. So what that means is that when you have it negative it will behave in the manner that you would expect it to behave when the setting is positive okay now that doesn't apply for the other ways as drawn, but for that wave in particular, the silk screen is goofy, um, and hopefully that will answer some questions that you may have about your Mini Brute. I will grant that they've had some bumps, but in general, considering that this is a software company that has made its first foray, foray into hardware, and, and the hardware is pretty is fairly complex behind something like this if you want good performance, especially if you're doing it in analog. I mean, if you're doing it in digital, uh, you can just use a quartz crystal and you get pretty good stability, and then you divide off of that to create, uh, you know, to do direct digital synthesis of other signals. With analog, the value of components drifts with temperature a lot more. They're much less precise and stable. So it is a lot more, a lot trickier because you have to build in systems to compensate for the drift. So this is not, electrically to engineer this is not a simple task. And given what they've come up with, even though they're a software company, they've never made hard made a hardware synth like this before, uh, is really amazing, even when there are uh, some minor quality control issues, like um, a lot of people have key weights that have fallen off, and can I show you the weights? You can see the weights underneath the keys, right there. So on some people's mini brutes, they've uh, fallen off. I haven't had that problem, 
Actually, to tell you the truth, this thing has worked perfectly since the day I got it. And I have loved every minute of it. <laughs> it is a, a tremendous machine. I, I'm not an expert by any means, but I really think this is going to join the pantheon of great analog synthesizers that will be remembered for a very long time to come. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope this clears up a uh, something of a mystery with the sawtooth wave that may that you may have noticed and may have been bugging you. Have a good day.